Hi everyone. Oh, hello. Hi. Hey. Sorry guys. Um, hey. You can obviously hear me fine. Uh, I might get you all to um, to put yourselves on mute if possible. Um, got a few dogs and the like going in the background and um, feel free. There'll be plenty of chance to uh, ask questions later. Uh, and you can also use chat function go to meeting that I'll uh, I'll try to get to later if you uh, something comes you uh, you want to uh, to write something but I uh, I might as well get started and uh, the purpose of today's meeting is to really show you through uh, online booking tool that the sports commission's created uh, so I'm here, I'm Nick Lambert, for those of you who don't know me, uh, Robin Tribe's in the room with me, so no doubt you uh, would have all spoken to us at some point in time, uh, so hopefully the intention of this is just to give you a bit of information and show you what this tool looks like uh, going forwards. Um, so to start with... Uh, Deb, you want me to make you the presenter? Why do you want me to do that? Uh, I might push on. You should be able to see uh, see my screen. So you can't see the screen before we get started. We're also recording it. We're going to put it up on the website so you can have a look at it again later. Sorry guys, for some reason I got disconnected there. Can you hear me again now? Yeah. Yes, I can. Yeah. Apologies. Um, I'll uh, I'll move on then. Um, first of all, I just wanted to briefly go over the objectives of the Sporting Schools program. Uh, you all probably know this, but it leads into why we've got this booking tool and a few of the, the business rules that are going to be created around this booking tool. Uh, so we really what we're trying to do is increase exposure for gymnastics and increase, increase participation outcomes, uh, build a professional coach workforce for, for you guys, the clubs, um, build the capabilities of affiliated clubs, increase membership in clubs, uh, develop and improve resources and school-based events, and obviously promote the benefits of gymnastics to, uh, to schools and parents and, uh, and everyone in the community. So for those of you, anyone who's not involved uh, currently and is looking to be involved, uh, the parameters of being involved in the Sporting Schools Program for Gymnastics are, are really as follows. Uh, you need to be endorsed by us, Gymnastics Australia. Um, schools will log on and nominate uh, if they want to deliver before, during or after school. There's a minimum requirement of 10 students per session. Uh, currently, Launchpad Sporting Schools uh, sessions or programs run for four sessions and have a duration of 45 to 60. Uh, so we've loaded all of this information into the booking system when schools get the chance to log in and uh, choose a gymnastics package that will then filter out to you guys, the coaching providers. Um, so coaching providers are uh, Yourselves, the clubs, you can be a private provider or some of our state affiliates are uh, running programs themselves. Um, so individual coaches, we need to link to one of these coaching providers, so either the state body or a club. So at the minute, 
no one in the community can just log on and coach by themselves or the uh, coaching is going through coaching providers uh, and as I mentioned before they're endorsed by the uh, the national sporting organization so a bit of the process flow is that the school selects gymnastics uh, through this online booking system we then filter it out to you guys the coaching providers uh, you'll select a coach and then you can communicate with the school run the program or if it doesn't work for you you have the ability to accept or reject that program if it doesn't work you can also amend it uh, but I'll go into a little bit of that detail later on um, what we've done in conjunction with this uh, new online booking tool is try to make it a little bit more flexible for you guys the coaching providers um, in the past you were able to negotiate a price at 121 plus participants what we've now done uh, in conjunction with this booking tool going live is change that to 91 plus participants where you can go back and forth with the school and work out a price. Uh, the reason we've done that is uh, just to allow you guys a little bit more flexibility. We got some feedback that at that price point it was becoming difficult for clubs to, uh, to run a sustainable product. Um, so what we've done is made a change there uh, that we will communicate out to to everyone, and um, it is it will be reflected in this booking system going forward. Uh, so hopefully that creates a little bit more flexibility for you. Uh, the second section down the bottom here, the um, the invoice that GA charges the clubs, uh, that'll stay the same. So up to 150 participants, still two dollars plus GST per head, but you will have the flexibility to charge uh, whatever you like at that 91 plus participant level. Okay, what I will do now is move on to the portal itself, what it looks like. So each coaching provider will be set up with a screen like this and a login. Uh, so I'm using a sample coaching provider here and you'll enter your unique uh, username and password you can click remember me so you've only got to uh, remember those details once and then you'll be able to log into your system. Okay, so when you log into the Sporting Schools online portal this is what you'll see. So it'll give you a welcome, uh, welcome CP contact 34, that's where your coaching provider name will be uh, and then you'll have the opportunity to view any bookings that have been assigned to your uh, club or um, to you as the coaching provider. First thing you'll need to do is click view bookings and then you'll see this screen will come up and this is where you really manage all of the bookings that have been assigned to you as the coaching provider. Um, so you'll see this assigned section here, uh, this is where it goes from NSO, so all programs will originally come to Gymnastics Australia and then we'll filter out programs to uh, affiliate, registered and affiliated coaching providers uh, and it'll come up here assigned to CP which is coaching provider, uh, Gymnastics Dubbo is, is this test site. Uh, next thing we have the ability to do is to log in and view the program. So what you'll see in, uh, in this first instance is that there's a range of different packages that have been loaded by Gymnastics Australia. So this first example is a Launchpad Gym Skills package for 30 participants uh, requested by Randwick Public School and a little bit of address information. Uh, there is a teacher delivery option but this won't be filtered through to you guys as you obviously don't need to know about anything that's being delivered by teachers. Uh, but then what you can do is click on this little blue tick uh, and you'll be able to see the details of the specific program. Okay, so first thing worth uh, mentioning, is you, mentioning is you can see that workflow, so the activity log. Uh, so a program has been created, a booking has been created by Randwick Public School. It's gone through to Gymnastics Australia. Uh, Gymnastics Australia has then filtered that out to Gymnastics 001. Uh, on the right hand side 
you have the ability to see the program details. Uh, so in this comment section is the first thing that you might want to use. Uh, if you're chatting to uh, schools and you've been dealing with schools for a long time, they have the ability in this comment section to list the preferred coaching provider. Um, so if Dubbo Primary School wanted Dubbo Gymnastics to run their program, they could list in this comment section when they uh, go through and book the, pro the program, can this please be delivered by Gymnastics Dubbo, then I will obviously filter the, um, the program through to Gymnastics Dubbo. Um, schools have the ability to make any comment they want in there, so it might be the three special needs children, uh, so you know as much information as, as possible when you uh, get to the program. Uh, the next section down is the booking details, so what, um, what the school has selected that they want to run the program. So the first section here is the price. Uh, so this price here is the same as any four-week program that we were delivering before in sporting schools, uh, inclusive, of, inclusive of GST. So a 30-child four-week program would have been $750 plus GST. Gymnastics Australia have loaded in a package that has made this $825. So that GST component is included in there. Uh, there is the ability to log in and edit cost. So if there were special circumstances, you could uh, log in. Uh, I don't know, if you had to travel certain time, you could log in and that would go back to the school before you agreed it. But uh, what Gymnastics Australia will be doing is uh, making sure that these costs are in line with the funding model. Um, so you'll be able to see there. Next thing is the age groups. So uh, what we've done is loaded packaging which is into this portal being Kinder Gym, Gym Skills and Gym Fun. Now they align with certain age groups. So you can see this program is an 8 to 13 year old age group uh, for 30 kids. So you can't amend them because that's what the school's requesting. Uh, next thing is when they'd like the sessions. So Randwick Public School has logged in and said they'd like sessions on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, with the dates following. Obviously they're looking to run it after school. Now me looking at this I'd say okay so Sundays probably uh, you're not going to be able to do that. So you as the coaching provider can log in and say okay you selected Sunday uh, the 9th of October that one's probably not going to work. Let's amend that, so let's edit. Um, can I just say that because you get the details of Randwick Public School or whatever the school is, you can um, contact them and discuss those sessions with them before you edit that back. So you don't have to make those changes until you've had that discussion. And see what I've done there is logged in change that program from the Sunday to the following Monday, the details being the same, uh, so then you can be on the same page as the, uh, as the school. What Robin was talking about here is the school details, so Randwick Public Schools details will come here. Good idea to obviously use the phone number and the, uh, and the email address to contact the writer, so you'll also have this school contact name, uh, so that will be the person who's booked the program. So obviously a good idea to give them a call and if you are wishing to amend any of these session details uh, before you uh, lock that program in. Um, the map will also come up. Uh, so if you're a bit unsure of where the school actually is, you can log in, uh, you can minimise and maximise and see where this school is obviously in relation to uh, to your gymnastics club or where you're willing to go. Um, from there, you have the ability to reject the program if you don't want to. Uh, what will happen then is the program will come back to Gymnastics Australia and we'll filter it out to another coaching provider uh, or you can assign a booking. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you in this page of what a booking looks like is the package details. So this is 
essentially what a school sees when they choose a gymnastics program. Um, so in the view section, uh, we have a little bit of information about what a Launchpad Gym Skills package is. Um, so you'll be able to have a read of yourself for that at the minute, but it includes details such as a school gymnastics kit that Gymnastics Australia sends out to all participants. Uh, it's, uh, and that mentions lesson plans uh, and, uh, and pretty much everything that's delivered in the program. What it also says is delivery can be flexible, so it can be at the school or gym club or a hybrid of the two. Uh, and what we do is recommend you make contact with the coaching provider there, lock in the school there, lock in the details. Um, we don't necessarily need to know them, but lock it in before you uh, hit this, or before you accept the program, which I'll show you how to do now. So we're happy with Randwick Public School. We need to assign a coach. So anyone who has sent me through details of the coaches that you'd like loaded into the system, or if you previously had coaches in the past sporting school system that were registered and endorsed properly, so that means they had intermediate gymnastics qualifications and the Working With Children check, they'll automatically appear in here. Uh, you also will have the ability to log in and manage your own workforce, but I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, so what you need to do is assign a coach for this program to be accepted. So I can log in here and see all my coaches for Gymnastics Dubbo that are active, that are in the system and ready to go. I can pick a test coach, 49459, select them, and uh, total package will automatically be loaded from the booking details that we've mentioned before, the cost, uh, and then I can assign that program to the coach. Can I just say also, with the total package cost, if you're in that 91 and above, um, you'll be able to put in your price that you've negotiated with the school at that point. And I'll show you one of them in a minute. Uh, so once we assign this coach, it goes through a processing phase. So you'll uh, receive notification that Dubbo Gymnastics has assigned the coach to uh, whatever coach it is. Uh, then that coach will be sent an email. On that email, there'll be a confirmation section, a box that they'll need to confirm, yes, they're happy to do that program. Uh, there's a little bit of a glitch in this system at the minute. If I go back into bookings, uh, what that will happen is this status will say pending. Uh, it'll say accepted once. Yes. So you'll have a list of accepted programs, any new programs come in from Gymnastics Australia, uh, and any that are pending, which pretty much means just they're still waiting for the coach to accept. Uh, so that'll all exist. Um, example of what Robin was talking about is uh, Gympad sorry, Launchpad Gym Skills, 240 participants. Uh, ignore that group size 30, uh, but what we've listed, we haven't listed a price here because it's obviously negotiable between you and the school. So if we assign a coach here, assign to a coach, you can enter your total package cost there. But what we do end is that you ring up and um, obviously discuss that with the school before you make those arrangements which will be um, which will obviously be in the details down here that we mentioned before. Uh, so that's really how you manage your workflow of um, programs that come in and Gymnastics Australia will produce business rules around this that we will uh, we will give make open and, and give to everyone. Um, but this is pretty much how you manage your coach portal and how you manage the flow of programs. Um, what the Sporting Sports Commission has also done is they've taken away a bit of the workfo uh, workforce management from Elves and from Gymnastics Australia and given it to coaching providers. So if we go into network, coach network, 
Air, you can manage your coach workforce, so you can add a new coach, you can remove a coach, uh, you can update details, all those sorts of things. Uh, so if I wanted to add a new coach because I employed someone else to run sporting schools, add coach, and Lambert, obviously you need to enter the details with this red flag. Uh, so enter as much information as you can. You need the, any coach you do enter needs to have a valid email address because that's how that confirmation process works. So if I enter an email address, uh, you can enter phone details and then it'll automatically connect that coach with your coaching provider. Uh, so, with the club. Well, sorry, with the club. So what we can do is set that up uh, and then they will appear. Uh, it'll bring you to a working with children check, which is the next uh, stage. Any coach that you add, um, the Sports Commission and Gymnastics Australia will need to make sure that there's a valid working with children check on file. So what you can do is add the working with children check details. Um, so check ID, which will be on your working with children check card, the state, your clearance type. So there's blue cards in various states. The majority of them will be working with children checks. Uh, if there's any exemption for a certain reason, uh, age base will be they're under 18 teacher or a police officer, so won't be overly common, but um, that will be in there too. So if I wanted to put an age-based exemption, exemption. Uh, and then the start and finish date of your working with children check. So once you put that in there, uh, the Sports Commission will go in and check this for you. So they're asking for copies of, um, scanned copies of that working with children check. Uh, in the following file formats that they'll then go on and verify. Um, so any that were already in the, their system will be moved across, but you can go in, attach a file, uh, and add work with children check details there. This one obviously won't work for a variety of reasons, uh, but you can manage your, your coach workforce there. Um, if any details change, you can all you can go in to your related coach network, click on your coach and amend any of these details at any point in time. Um, so yeah, if they change um, changed email address or change street address, you can, uh, can amend that. What you can also do from your coaching provider section is you have a profile here. So if the contact changed at your club, you could amend all of these details. You could change the password if you didn't want someone particularly getting in. Uh, you can change the email. You can change the mobile phone number. So you can manage your own uh, your own coaching provider page essentially that um and give restrictions to whoever you want it to be uh, to be restricted to. So that's there under the section here. Uh, you won't worry about parent account because your parent account will be Gymnastics Australia, so that's nothing that you need to worry about. Um, and you won't really have any related account networks here either um, because you'll be the coach provider who, uh, who distributes those programs. Um, this is a bit of an off-the-shelf model that's set up for 32 sports, so there's a range of different circumstances, which is why these things exist. So Nick, if um, they if they wanted the um, the email to come back, the confirmation email to come back to them rather than the coach. So they so if you're assigning a coach, but you actually want that confirmation to come back to yourself as the coaching provider, what do they need to do? Yep. So what you'll need to do in that circumstance is log in here and amend all these email addresses to make it the uh, the club's email address or the particular email address that you wanted to go through to. Um, so what that will mean is if this test coach 209 was the email that you wanted, then you'd receive that email and you could confirm that program uh, at any point in time rather than 
having to contact each of your coaches to say, hey, Nick, I've, um, I've mm, sent an email you. through to you. Um, presumably you have your own ways of doing that. Uh, so that is something that you can set up if you want to that we'd probably recommend uh, just so you can manage that workflow and don't have to um, chase up your coaches all the time to get them to accept an email. Uh, you'll, yeah, you'll obviously have your own discussions as to whether they can or can't run the program. Um, these, so these statuses will change. They don't at the minute. So that will say either, um, either confirmed, pending or new. And you can filter by any of these. So if you only want to look at your new programs, pending programs or any that you've rejected, you can log in and see them. Uh, so you can filter by them and there is the ability to do that. If you also wanted to search, so we were only interested in Randwick, you can search Randwick and it will bring up just that program. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to find out how many programs you were running in a certain suburb, you can do that uh, by that by that area. you notice also in the state, back in the status drop down box, that there's the cancelled. Now schools can go in and cancel a booking for whatever reason. Um, and I would assume that that's when that will come up. Yeah, so schools uh, may have applied for lots and lots of sporting programs, work out that they can't fund it, uh, and then they may select that they want to cancel certain programs. Uh, there's obviously advice that they don't do that. It happens in rare circumstances. So if you see it cancelled, then it's been cancelled by the school. Um, what we're advising is that as soon as you get one of these bookings, um, go in, have a look, jump on the phone and work out the details with the school contact that you'll have, uh, and then you can start that, um, I guess, start that back and forth as to, to what you actually want to do to, um, to enter this sort of session information. So yeah, that's, that's what we're advising. Um, because obviously the sooner you book in the program from when you get it, the least likely it is to get cancelled. Mm. Um, there will be some business rules around how long it can be sitting with a, a club or coaching provider, you know, before we then take it back, I guess. And yeah, from a Gymnastics Australia point of view, we, uh, we don't want to distribute programs to coaching providers and have them sitting there for three weeks with schools wondering what's going on. Um, so we will give you a bit of information and we're developing some business rules at the minute as to uh, how long we'll allow a, a program to sit there before it's either actioned or you've notified us that something's going to happen. So watch that space a little bit and, uh, and that'll happen. Uh, last thing that I wanted to show you is this help. So this has been set up by sporting schools if there's anything that you're, you're not sure of. Um, so for sporting organisations, which is probably the one that you guys will use the most. It'll come up with some frequently, frequently asked questions. So it looks like this one's for schools, but um, let's see if that works. There you go. So any questions that you want to know if you can't necessarily get onto anyone at Gymnastics Australia, these might answer your questions. So how do I accept or decline a booking? Uh, what's the booking system? How do I assign a coach? Uh, how do I get booking information? That sort of thing. So there's a variety of information here that you can look for that's all in there. So that's probably your first uh, first port of call if you're looking for, uh, if there's any information that you don't know. Um, so all of that's there, and under um, under the coaching provider section will be most relevant for you guys. Um, but there's obviously the the coach section there too, which will say things like that they'll get their email, um, how long does registration last, who can coach, those sorts of things, uh, manage bookings, things like there needs to be an email set up. So. Welcome to go on and have a look at that and read as much or as, uh, or as little as you like. Um, probably all I've got for you all at the minute. Are there any questions or anything you'd like me to go through at this point in time?
Yeah, Nick, can I just ask a quick question? Of course. Um, so when you said when you said in the document that you sent out via email to state uh, from a state point of view, how are we going to assess control? Um, sorry, Tony, we're having trouble hearing you. Can you start again? Oh, is this any better? Yeah, yeah lots way better. better. Okay, so just looking at the document that was sent out to um, myself last week, from a state point of view, how are we going to, I guess, control what coaching providers and coaches, what their um, accreditations are, so to make sure everybody's yep. accredited and have details for new coaches? Good question. Um, any new coaching provider that comes onto this system, uh, same same system as currently, you obviously won't need to sign in through the Sporting Schools uh, website um, that was a bit of a nightmare that plenty of people had trouble with in the past, but new clubs will need to sign uh, the terms and conditions on the Launchpad page, which comes through to Gymnastics Australia. We then check that they're an affiliated club, uh, so that is the first step in uh, managing that uh, coaching providers registering for this um, portal actually are clubs or have the, the correct affiliations. Um, so I can go on from a uh, national sporting organisation viewpoint and add and remove uh, coaching providers in this section. Um, regards to coaches, uh, there's still a little bit being worked out, but we will have the ability to go in and see any coach that's been set up in this system. Uh, so we're obviously going to check that they're an intermediately accredited coach uh, and that they match the criteria, and then we'll have the ability to remove any coaches that don't meet the, uh, the standards for becoming a coach in sporting schools. Um, so what that is is being an intermediate accredited coach and having a working with children check. And we, some of the work that we will have to do um, is uh, run a check on the validity of that accreditation so that, that, that it's current and so forth. So that will be part of our um, work. Hello. Um, I'll answer some of the questions on the chat. Uh, Nikki's asked when do schools and receive access to the book system. Uh, the, the idea is that this is going live in Term 4. Uh, so all Term 4 programs will be booked the system. Uh, so all coaching providers will be set up with access to the system before Term 4. Uh, anyone who's currently uh, coaching the old system, I've set them up with access. Uh, so as soon as it goes live, uh, you will be sent logins and passwords. Um, schools will apply for their Term 4 funding, then as part of that they will then be instructed to go on and use this system to book in uh, any programs for the, the 32 sports involved in sporting schools. If you have um, already received you know, booking requests from schools for Term 4, what I would be suggesting you say to those schools is um, when they get that opportunity to go online, to go online and read book and in that note section request your club. Uh, Kate has asked who assigns the school. Uh, all programs come through to Gymnastics Australia. Uh, so what we're doing at the minute is producing some business rules around how that works. But she's asking about the school. So the school selects gymnastics if that's what they want to do and they would select gymnastics in the portal. Yes. Yeah, we don't uh, so it. what I'm asking is, do you guys assign the clubs the schools? Because, you know, there's, say, five clubs in one area. How do you assign them? Exactly. Do you assign yeah. them on the closest, you know, the closest club to the school? Because, well, how do you do it? Because at the moment, I don't know about anyone else, but schools ring us or send us emails. So, you know, how do we go about this now? Process process at the minute, Kate, um, is uh, we're, we're going to develop some business rules. So we have a record of any uh, sporting school program that's run in the past. So anyone that's run in the past, we're going to direct to the same coaching provider. Um, 
in the first instance, what we're going to do is use this notes section. Um, so we advise clubs to tell schools, list us as your coaching provider in your notes section. Um, that makes it easy, so then we'll just filter them out to who's been selected. Uh, a range of other business rules that we're developing, um, things like that uh, you can't have any outstanding uh, invoices that need to be paid with Gymnastics Australia, uh, and then you're right, we, uh, we plan on going down that path of um, closest club to where the school is, uh, that I guess we believe is the, the fairest way to do it, unless those relationships exist. Um, we're also going to give clubs with a membership base, um, so affiliated gymnastics clubs priority, uh, because we believe that's, um, that's our number one goal from sporting schools is obviously to transition kids into gymnastics clubs. So and grow membership. And, and grow membership, as I mentioned in the, uh, in the start. So that's going to be uh, included in the business rules that will get published and, um, and obviously distributed to all of you. So hopefully that answers a little bit of your, your question, Kate. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, it was not our intention to be the middle man in this whole system. We would have much preferred the schools to be able to um, go online and you know select their coaching provider and, and all of the ones that we already have registered and so forth. But unfortunately, because as Nick said, it is a, 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 um, a standard booking tool for 32 different uh, national sporting organisations, we we were um, you know the, we couldn't make and change it in that way. So unfortunately we are in the middle of it, um, but we're working with those you know, objectives in mind and those business rules in mind. And those business rules will be on the Launchpad website for everybody to mm -hmm. see. We, we did also try to remove that, um, that coach step in the process. Mm -hmm. um, obviously different sports run sporting schools differently and, and need that coach verified with a working with children check. Um, we will have all, we've had all you guys sign our terms and conditions, so we, we know you agree to that, but unfortunately, it wasn't something that we could get uh, get removed in this version. Um, hasn't been. They, they've said in the past potentially this can uh, that may be able to happen, but not sure. Mm. Nick, can I just ask you a quick question? Um, yes. Maybe I misheard. Maybe I misheard because the line was breaking up a little bit. Um, but did I hear correctly in thinking that you're asking coaches to? Put yourselves down as the first point of contact, or is that, um, or is that the process? Is it? No. What we're asking is in this um, in this network. So each coaching provider will be able to manage their own workforce. So manage their own coach network. What we're saying is, um, and they need to have a valid email address for a program to be confirmed. So what we're saying is that it's not a bad idea. If in this system you set up all your coaches with your coach coordinator contact email address so that then you can confirm that the program is going to occur, um, obviously chat to your coaches, make sure they're available, make sure they're qualified, all those sorts of things. Um, but in order to, to manage that filtering out of you may have 10 coaches, uh, coach confirmations would then be going to 10 emails. If you wanted to manage that process, uh, you can obviously manage this email address to be the one email address. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Thanks. So when the book it, when you uh, assign that booking to the coach, if you've got the club generic or the or the or your club contact email address in there, the email confirmation will come back to you, and it won't go out to the coach. I know a lot of clubs, you know, decide what they do with their coaches down the track. So they want to take that booking, but they might not know at that moment in time who the coach is going to be in four weeks time or six weeks time. So by having a generic club email address in there or the club contact email address in there, the confirmation will just come back to you rather than being sent out to a coach that might not necessarily be the one that goes to the school. I might just go through a few more of these uh, online Written questions whilst I've got them. Uh, is there a capacity to gather additional data, breaking down groups, gender, uh, ATSI identification? Not 100% sure yet, Nikki. There will be reporting functions from this. Uh, we haven't been shown what they look like yet. We've asked similar questions as to what we can export out of this system, um, whether that be uh, merely what coaches you've run, how many, uh, what programs you've run, sorry, how many kids 
those sorts of things. Um, yeah, they're, they're getting back to me with what the reporting capability of this system will be. Uh, so hopefully there are more information. I'm not sure it will be as um, as great as gender breakdown or AT, SLA information yeah, because there's yeah. no way to, in, to enter it in this system. Um, in the past, the Sports Commission have done that through acquittals uh, that will eventually be linked to this, so maybe then it will happen, but I wouldn't hold my breath in the interim for that one. I, I think that there may be in the school, when the school logs in, I think there may be tick boxes around um, potentially those three categories of special needs, remote that, uh, and Indigenous, so yep. potentially, yeah. Uh, Tony, is this based on one coach going to provide the program to 30 participants in one session? Uh, all, That's up to the coaching provider. Yeah, I guess we, we leave that up to you guys. Um, what we'll do is we'll set the basic price that, um, that has been the same funding model in the past. So that's based on a 1 to 25 model uh, for four sessions. We understand that sometimes you run sessions that uh, run programs that go for longer than four sessions. And if that happens, we're happy for you to charge schools whatever you like outside of this program. Um, don't have an issue with that. If, you, if the school wanted eight sessions and you wanted to double the cost, we're happy for you to, to do that as well in, in this system um, and manage it that way. Uh, but the basic package is the minute and the launch pad package that we've said, this is the gymnastic program in sport and schools, is a four session program. Yeah, so if you were negotiating more sessions outside of the four, um, you would do that directly with the school and you would charge whatever it is you charge for the additional session. Yep. And I think I read somewhere down that do you need to enter that in this system. We're happy for you to, but you don't necessarily need to. It doesn't affect anything that comes to, to Gymnastics Australia. Um, we just really know that you're, you're running the session and I guess uh, those bookings are a, a base model if you like. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to extend upon that, you can. We definitely do need to know the number of participants, the correct number of participants, give or take, you know, two or three, um, and that obviously is because we send out all of the resources to those children. So that's a really important thing that you make sure, um, you know, if, if the schools put down uh, 50 participants and then when you ring them up and they say, oh, actually we've changed it to 32, um, you know, if we can have that as accurate as possible, um, then that assists us. The other thing worth mentioning at the minute is the system only allows up for two up to 240 participants. Um, it's probably not a bad thing because uh, that's generally about as much as the sporting schools funding grant funding will cover. But if you're going to run programs for more participants than that, obviously ring up, have the discussion with the school, uh, and you can uh, you can work that out yourselves. Um, but this system at the minute. Only um, you'll only get a program through that says 240 participants, and we're that's gonna, at a negotiable level. We're going to have to discuss that because we need to know the right, the, the accurate amount. So I'm going to move on. Um, Justine's question is: What happens if we need to book for the broader age group, uh, which covers both gym fun and gym skills? <laughs> Understandably, that can happen. Um, what they'll be doing is selecting the best model that fits them, um, and it's based on age groups, but. You've got, if they've selected a gym fund program, uh, we don't have a problem if it covers gym skill age groups as well, that's um, that's fine. Uh, keep in mind this is a, an off the shelf best, best thing that we can get, uh, so that's really what we're going for. But yeah, that's, that's fine, that sort of flexibility. Uh, Lee's asked, what do we do if a school contacts us directly? Uh, do we redirect them to the sporting schools website to register their interest? Um, Lee, schools will still contact you directly. There's no doubt about that. Um, what I'd advise that you do is firstly make sure that they um, have applied for funding properly. So contact sporting schools, make sure that they've gone through that process. Uh, and then advise them that they need to now book their program through this portal, uh, whereas in the past, there was the uh, the booking form which is sent back to me. That will no longer exist because that will be done through this booking system. Uh, so they will need to do two steps. They'll need to go on, apply for their sporting schools grant, uh, and then go on and pick a package that um, 
a bigger gymnastic package should they want to run gymnastics uh, and obviously fill out the coaching provider section in the comments so um, list uh, list pit gymnastics if that's who they want to deliver the program uh, so yeah that's that's the process firstly make sure that if they have funding secondly use the online booking tool to um, to book their program will the school be able to um, actually apply for one of these packages if they haven't received funding that term <sighs> Not 100% sure. Mm. I, I don't think they will have access to, to log in and book a program unless they've got funding. Uh, in the future, the funding will be linked to the booking process, which it isn't currently. But in the future, uh, they'll have a, a set amount of funding that they obviously go on and book their programs for, which looks a bit like a shopping cart type of a, um, a model. Um, schools have the ability to go on and compare these packages between sports or compare what a um, what a kinder gym is to a gym fund package, those sorts of things. Uh, Justine's asked, after discussing potential travel costs with schools, do we need to adjust the cost on the booking website, or is just an agreement between school and provider? It's an agreement. Exactly, agreement between school and provider. Um, happy for you to enter the program cost in the booking tool. Uh, as I said, we don't use that information. It's a guide for, for you guys. Uh, but that information will be sent back to the school and their confirmation. So if you want to um, amend that for what you've agreed upon, that's fine with us. But there's no, no need. We're happy for you to um, discuss that with the school. Uh, Peninsula Gymnastics. So back to that funding. Uh, funding model. So. The one thing that's changed about the funding model, and I'll bring it up again, is the 91 plus category. So at 91 plus participants, you now have the ability to negotiate. Um, what we've done is all the, uh, the products loaded into this booking uh, booking tool will have prices aligned to this funding model. So anything that's 91 plus will have zero to zero, meaning it's negotiable. Um, so if you get a program for 150 kids, it'll almost automatically come through with no price on it, mm. that you'll have the chance to negotiate, whereas the other ones, the 10 to 30 participants will come through at 750 plus GST, so 825. Uh, 1320 and 1650 so mm. that's uh, that's what we've loaded into the system uh, so it's in line with this funding model so the only thing that's changing is that top end level yeah so in the past it was from 151 onwards was negotiable we've lowered it down to 91 participants and above is mm -hmm. negotiable by the coaching provider our the gymnastics Australia component um, that we invoice the clubs has not changed at all. So it's exactly the same as it was. Um, it's just that you now have that opportunity to negotiate your own price from 91 students onwards. Uh, Ashley's asked, does this mean we no longer have to fill in the booking form and send to GA? Uh, exactly right, Ashley. From term four onwards, you won't have to do that because we'll have this information in the system. Uh, e, I have visibility over this system as well. so. GA can log in and see uh, the status of a booking. So anything that's that's new, that's pending, that's been confirmed or rejected, uh, we have that at, at any point in time. So there's no need for that booking form anymore. Any other questions? That's all I've got on the chat question. Does anyone have anything else that they'd uh, like to ask at this point in time? Uh, before we go, um, the one thing I do have the ability to do is to send you uh, links to this test site if you want to play around. Uh, I'm not sure how long it will be active for, but you can definitely do that. So if you wanted me to send you a link, uh, feel free to send me an email and I can uh, send you a, a login and password so you can log in and, and have a play around. Um, presumably you've all got my details, but if not, uh, email is in Lambert at gymnastics.org.au uh, so feel free to send me an email and I'll send you uh, access to this portal 
where you can log in and just see how it would work for your club. So Pete asked the question. A uh, couple more. What happens if the school doesn't have enough funding for four sessions? Really what we're, we're trying to do is make sure that they use these packages. Um, so I guess the minimum package is 825 in gymnastics to sort of what to make... The sport, sorry, what the Sports Commission has said is that um, the schools are able to now subsidise the program themselves as well so they can use their sporting schools funding and then add to it through incursion fees or some other way. Um, so our cost remains the same, the 750, the 1200, etc. But if they can't afford that for whatever reason, then they need to find the money in some other way. The only reason um, that would occur is if they, they're trying to run a, a large variety of sporting schools programs. Um, so they would have used all their sporting schools funding. They also have the ability to, to do this in another term. So if they can't pay you to run the sessions, feel free to um, defer them to another term, if you like, where they can obviously pay the appropriate cost. Um, we don't want any coaching providers to be out of pocket for running these sessions. So the, the funding model has really been designed with, with that in mind, that we don't want, um, want too many really being run at a lower cost because it obviously impacts your ability to pay your coaches and, and those sorts of things. Um, Ashley, I don't have any uh, set dates as to when you will receive your login details. Um, it'll obviously have to happen soon with uh, grants should be open for term four shortly and obviously once that happens um, programs will be loaded into this system. Uh, so b before the start of term four is really the only advice that I can give you at the minute. Um, we've got a few more teleconferences and there's a few bugs in the system that need to be sorted out in the meantime, uh, but that's, um, that's happening. Uh, Justine, will we receive an email when a new booking is allocated to us or is it to us to check the new bookings? Not 100% sure. Um, I'd advise that you go in and check the new bookings anyway uh, because there could be a little bit of a, a workflow there uh, and they'll definitely appear in that system. Um, at this stage, I don't think you receive an email because I'm not sure that we've set up, um, oh, we will have set up each coaching provider with an email, but uh, it's obviously going to go to to generic club email sort of thing as well. Um, I can check that one for you and, and see what happens, but my advice would be to regularly log in, log in and check the bookings, um, especially in those first few weeks of term where the majority of um, programs come in. I guess um, from my Sports Commission experience, if you like, uh, term, uh, sorry, weeks two and three of a school term is when teachers are really looking to to book in a lot of these programs. Some will do it earlier, but that's when the, the workflow of uh, school bookings tends to go crazy. So I'd, um, I'd be logging in at least every uh, every couple of days at that point in time. Um, Nick, do you know when um, schools, or when the, the funding becomes available for the schools? Uh, hey, I don't have any definitive dates for term four funding at the mm. minute. I think they've delayed it a little bit because they wanted to get this system ready before they opened up the funding, but we haven't been told. Yeah, look, I'm not sure who that was, but it will have to be soon mm. because obviously they need to get the funding out the door before these can happen. I'll um, answer this one. Presumably in the next couple of weeks. So Natasha's asking, will clubs still need to be launch pad trained to be able to deliver sporting schools? Um, no, they don't have to be, but it's obviously the best practice model that we would prefer. So if a club is not launch pad trained, um, you know, definitely contact your state um, sporting uh, gymnastics association in your state um, and, you know, request that you your coaches do the launch pad training and, and that they come out and, and, and visit your club. So no, you don't need to be launch pad trained to deliver the sporting schools program as long as you're an intermediate um, coach. Um, and you are aligning your lessons to the Launchpad philosophy and the Launchpad lesson plans, then we're happy with that. But the best practice model is where the, the club does have uh, Launchpad trained coaches 
um, that have uh, completed the Zoom workshop, but um, it's, it's not mandatory at this stage. Uh, Bree is asking, will bookings then be allocated to clubs who are launchpad trained over those no. who are not? Not at the minute, no. Um, the, the process that we're going with is that we want to maintain the relationships that you've had with your schools in the past. Um, so if we know about that, and the ways that we're going to know about it, that is from a past booking form that's been submitted. Um, so if we know about that, we'll definitely give that same club preference. Uh, but no, we're not giving preference to, to launchpad clubs over other clubs. Um, we will give preference to, I guess, affiliated gymnastic clubs with members as we're trying to, to grow that membership base. Um, in reality, there should be enough programs for everyone. We're, we've got 550 program requests for Term 3 again um, after about 600 for Term 2. So the, the demand's there and we're currently not quite filling the demand. So this may be a way that we, if anyone wants more programs uh, and is, is willing to travel a little bit, there will definitely be programs that exist for, for all variety of coaching providers. I think I've answered everything on the uh, chat. Um, before we wrap it up, does anyone have any other questions they'd like to ask or anything that's, uh, that's on anyone's mind? You can certainly give Nick or myself a ring at any time. Um, you know, we're happy to, to have a chat over the phone or if you want to send us an email, um, you know, we'll answer those as well. Keep your eyes on the Launchpad website in the Sporting School section because we'll be updating all of that information as we go. Um, and obviously we'll be posting things up on the Gymnastics Australia website as well. Um, but definitely keep keep checking the Launchpad uh, Gymnastics website because that will have the most current information. No worries. And if you want to play around with the system, let me know and I can send you through some, some login details for as long as it's, uh, this test environment's up and running. Thanks, guys. If no one's got anything else, I might, uh, might end it there. Thank you for all attending. And if you've got any, uh, any questions, feel free to, to contact Robin or I. See you, guys. Thanks. See ya. Thank you. Yep, thank you, Nick. Very important.